So I'd like to welcome everyone. This is our uh, GL's December 2018 webinar. And um, if you're familiar with our webinar series here, we try to do one every month. And we've stuck to that throughout the year. And uh, we feel like they've been pretty successful. We've got some good feedback from our customers, existing customers and potential customers and so forth. So I'd like to welcome, welcome you all, um, our representatives that are on the line with us, um, existing customers, people who would like to learn a little bit about our topic today. Um, what is that topic? The topic for today is uh, gateway router performance measurements. So we're going to learn a little bit about uh, gateways and routers at the beginning, what um, performance measurements are applicable when testing them. And we'll show you a little bit about how GL is doing that. We've got some new applications and some new solutions for uh, testing routers and gateways. So um, we're featuring today a couple of our expert presenters, um, VJ and Chetan are here with me, joining me. My name is Matt, and I also have uh, Sanjeev on with us as well. Sanjeev will be tracking your questions throughout the webinar. So in your GoToWebinar um, menu bar there that you've logged in with, you can, uh, throughout the webinar, you can ask questions. So feel free to do that. He will be collecting them, and then we'll have a Q&A session at the end where we'll take as much time as needed to try to address all questions. So one other note that I'd like to make is the webinar is getting recorded. So, uh, and we will be posting it on our website, gl.com, um, within a few days or so. So if you wanna share this with colleagues, um, it will be there for you. So let's go ahead and get started here. Welcome again. Um, just a quick note about GL Communications, if you're not familiar with us. We've been around since 1986. Uh, we're located in Gaithersburg, Maryland in the United States. Uh, we have offices throughout the world. We have an, uh, an office in Bangalore, India, one in China. And we have representatives uh, throughout the world in you know, many different countries. We focus on test and measurement equipment, test solutions. So we um, are in all different uh, um, networks and um, modes, uh, wireless, VoIP, Sonnet, TDM. We got started in TDM way back in the early 90s and we've progressed with technology. So we've got test equipment throughout uh, all of the communications sectors. Uh, we are focused uh, primarily on, but not exclusively on PC-based test equipment. So we, it's easy to use, a very friendly Windows environment, um, your, your research and development labs um, can use them. They're very detailed. Your technicians can use them. Uh, they're very friendly to use. So that's the background on GL. Um, as we get into the webinar here, I uh, wanted to start, um, and as we start to learn about gateways and router testing, uh, we kind of begin with why. And um, everybody is aware that our networks are in transition. And this has obviously been going on for quite some time, but it continues to go on. So this transition, um, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about, you know, tradition or transition to all IP. And it may be slow at the edge, but fast at the core. And why, why do we say that? Well, the edge um, has a lot of legacy equipment that is, uh, maybe enterprise have, have invested uh, money and time into this legacy equipment, and they may be slow to transition. The IP, uh, the core of the networks, are, are moving fast toward IP. That's one, one example. So carriers are trans transitioning faster than enterprises. That's what we've noticed. And uh, the technology, you know, technology at uh, consumer level, the technology at the core and throughout the network, is putting a lot of pressure on this transition. So it's making it go faster. Um, as I mentioned, enterprises are reluctant to transition until they see a return on investment um, that will allow them to, to make that decision. And uh, gateways provide the bridge for econ economical transition. So, you know, uh, 
everybody would like to, in a perfect world, to have the IP directly from end to end. Um, no gateways would be needed at that point. But gateways in the reality of, of, of the world today, gateways are needed because people have different uh, networks that they're trying to interface to. So we, we talk about what is a gateway, and that kind of leads into this slide. So we've defined it as uh, interworking between different networks, okay? It's just simply put. And we're talking about communication protocols or signaling protocols, signaling gateways, and media gateways with codec transitions and, and um, physical connections even. And we, we will say that that's a conversion from one technology to another. So a wired to wireless gateway, analog to TDM gateway, and a TDM to IP gateway. So all examples of what we consider gateways and what GL has focused some efforts on developing solutions for testing these, these different gateways. So this conversion, um, as I mentioned, can be signaling or media. So with signaling, we're talking, you know, uh, examples are casts to and from ISDN, ISDN to and from SS7 in the TDM world here, and SIGTRAN to and from uh, SS7. And, uh, you know, it, we, we can do ISDN to, um, to SIP is a, is a perfect example now, or SS7 to SIP in the IP world. So uh, media-wise, um, ALOL, MULOL in the TDM world to packet uh, protocols, uh, codecs, excuse me, G722, 720, uh, 729, some, some of these higher compression um, codecs that are being used. So when this, during these conversions, when these conversions happen, you know, uh, what is the result of that? Well, impairments are the result of that. And what types of impairments? Well, we need to be cognizant of delay, bit errors, jitter, loss, out of sequence packets on the packet side, all of these things. So this sort of sets the stage for how we're going to approach our webinar today and how our test equipment and our test solutions are, are built around. We, we just want to understand you know what are the factors affecting voice quality and what are the factors affecting the performance of the networks and the gateways in particular so factors affecting voice quality here's a simple diagram that we've put together a simple slide here that shows on the sender side of things um, what are we doing the voice source is coming in perfectly of course uh, we have to, we have an encoder on the sender side we packetize it um, that packetizer has some delay in it, as we know, um, there's we're not showing here, but there's a compression algorithm that's ha taking place there, putting it into it. So a codec has a compression algorithm. So all of these things are are contributing to voice quality. It gets into the IP cloud. Um, there's network delays, jitters, packet losses in that cloud. And at the receiver side, at the far end, we have to depacketize. There's some delay associated with that. Usually there's a jitter buffer there, there's, and that, that has some delay associated with it. And there's some codec impairment delay. So from end to end, from sender to receiver, there's many points along the way here. And, and there's many more that we haven't shown, but um, there's, there's, there's points along the way here where um, you know, the effect of voice quality is, needs to be looked at. So that's what we're showing with this. Um, one, one more depiction of that is we're showing delay, bit errors, as all of these are converging on the right-hand side of the slide uh, into the, the receiver's ear. All of these factors need to be, um, we need to be aware of, and we need to be looking for problems within our network and within our gateways. So it's a simple slide here that shows delay, bit errors, jitter, loss, um, all those things combining to the receiver's ear. And as a service provider, as an equipment manufacturer, um, as an enterprise, these metrics need to be looked at and need to be examined and need to be measured. And um, um, you, know, you need to be aware of those. So that's what we're trying to show you at this point. One way delay. Um, Specifically, looking at a little bit now of uh, into the, the delay, 
Uh, One-way delay, you know, here's just a, uh, a, a graph that shows uh, when we're talking about milliseconds of delay, if I'm talking to you in a conversation, if there is zero to 100 milliseconds of delay, that's acceptable to most users. You know, 100 to 150, acceptable, um, uh, and so forth. And, and you can see as we go down the list here, um, satellite delays, 150 to 250 milliseconds, very annoying. Everybody's experienced that most likely at some point in their life where you're trying, you're saying something and the, and the person on the far end is responding to what you maybe said 250 milliseconds ago. Um, so we're just showing uh, just a simple di- uh, graph here or a simple table of the delays and how they're acceptable to unacceptable in the perceived ear of a person on the far end. Okay. Again, uh, another diagram that we wanted to show just to start here um, where we're showing um, you know, different codecs and the comparison between codecs here. Um, not all codecs are equal. We know that some, we, we start out you know, just from the compression part of a codec, we, we start out at a baseline um, that you can see on the far left of the graph. And um, this is showing sort of how one-way delay affects codecs in different ways. It's not a linear effect. Some codecs are affected a little bit more on the perceived voice quality. Um, the MOS, the estimated MOS are affected uh, a little bit more for some codecs than others in one way, with one-way delay being the impairment. Okay. Uh, just expanding on that one more, uh, one more slide, we see how the MOS is affected uh, by packet loss in this case. So here's a, here's a graph that shows that um, uh, as packet loss increases, how the MOS decreases. And that's, that's something. Now, one thing to understand is, you know, not each, it's not, it's not a, a, a uniform or a linear um, reduction in, in MOS for each codec, okay? So, and some codecs are affected differently. So it's just a, it's just a graph to kind of set the stage here on what, what um, metrics need to be looked at, what things are affecting your overall quality. Other impairments before we get into some of our uh, KPIs and, and key performance indicators and things like that. Echo cancellation, line echo and acoustic echo need to be aware of these things. Digit transmission, we're talking about in-band digits and out-of-band digits. Um, you know, as, as, as a gateway takes from the TDM, TDM side digits, how is it going to transmit them out the IP side? Is it going to keep them in-band within the, within the MU law or the codec, or, or is it going to create an IP message in out-of-band digits? So uh, these types of things are very relevant uh, w- when you're talking about gateways. Fax transmissions. This is very important, um, transitioning from TDM to IP, uh, and how you're going, what's your methodology for doing that through a gateway router? Using T38, IP um, T38, or are we going to pass the tones through in band, basically? And background noise, okay? So how that's affected. Um, now I think we're going to get into um, some of the metrics that are important to measure. I talked to you a little bit about the degradation factors here on the first few slides. Uh, what key performance indicators are relevant as you're testing these gateways, these routers, and so forth? Um, and at this point, um, I'll, I'll transition to a colleague of mine, and he'll go into this ladder diagram and just show you we've used this as a, as a depiction of maybe some of the metrics that we, we are going to measure here, post-dial di- delay and call release delay. This is just an example of that. But at this point, what I'll do is I'll bring a VJ in to help out with that. So, VJ, if you can unmute sure. and, okay. and go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you hear me, Matt? Yes, I can. Okay, so. okay great. Thank you uh, for that introduction. Um, okay, so with any gateway, um, of course, uh, as Matt said, that the, there um, – they're a ne- necessary evil. Uh, you'd like to have a uniform network, uh, like the TDM network or or an all IP network, but that's not the case because people are in 
transition and they can't all do it at the same time. So gateways are the economical way of transitioning. They connect the older technology with the newer technology or, or, uh, or one technology versus another. Uh, so gateways will normally introduce some impairments. They're like translation. Uh, the translation is not always going to be perfect uh, language or otherwise. So, um, and we discussed earlier that there are, these gateways will have to perform multiple conversions uh, in the process of going from one network to another. There's media conversion, uh, where you're converting voice from perhaps Mula Ela to a different codec because you'd want to utilize bandwidth more efficiently, or uh, um, or you want to improve voice quality. For example, these days, uh, Mula Ela can be uh, the initial voice could be transmitted with higher bandwidth codecs, actually increasing voice quality. So there are. Uh, all sorts of these conversions going on. Here we're showing you that not only is there conversion of media, but there's also conversion of uh, signaling. Uh, whenever two people or multiple people are talking to each other in a conference call um, or a point-to-point -point call, there's going to be signaling involved. There's a call uh, a setup sequence and there's a call teardown sequence. So these signaling methods are different for ISDN for for example, in the uh, conventional TDM world uh, versus the IP world where SIP, for example, would be a typical signaling. Um, they do have analogs. Uh, in other words, a setup message might be equivalent to the invite and so on. So in, in these networks, this introduction of the gateway will also introduce these conversion delays or conversion uh, perhaps impairments depending on whether or not there is an exact match for each of the messages of each protocol. So here we're talking, oh, this is very important because uh, as new technology is introduced, we expect that call connect times will, will decrease, um, that uh, you can establish more frequent calls and uh, the throughput will be better and so on. But that's not necessarily always the case. So here are some metrics associated with signaling post dial delay is something that uh, is measured as soon as you hit the last digit until you hear the uh, ringing would be a typical, or, or, or in this case, post dial delay, we're defining that as, as uh, the, uh, the last digit uh, hit versus the connection. And similarly, there's call release delay. So there's a lot of these types of metrics that are involved in gateways and end-to-end -end networks. Um, this, uh, just wanted to mention that, okay. Okay, so, uh, and here we're just listing some of these. There's many, many more uh, that could be defined as signaling metrics, but I've just, uh, for vo especially for voice or uh, voice conferencing, these types of, of metrics are very important and I've tried to define what they are here. Uh, dial tone delay, that's the, method by which people get an indication from the network that they are allowed to uh, uh, enter the dialing, the, the destination number. Uh, post dial delay, as we just talked about that. Uh, there's uh, this call setup delay, for example. Uh, as you know, in the older technologies, especially in CAS, channel associated signaling, call setup delay could have been in the tens of seconds. And now with DTMF, it improved. With ISDN, it improved further. And with SS7, it's even faster. So um, you'd like to have the IP world be able to uh, um, be as good as, for example, SS7 call setups. These days, almost all calls are almost instantaneous. And there's a, a variety of other uh, metrics that one could uh, define. Uh, here I have successive call delay, for example, is there anything in the in the gateway that would uh, limit the the ability to make successive calls? In other words, what is the minimum intercall delay? Uh, what is the ability of the gateway to do handle sustained simultaneous sustained calls? Because these gateways generally are digital signal processing devices, and so they have certain performance limitations: uh, the number of calls it can handle, the number of 
of uh, simultaneous calls because they're trying to do signaling and media conversion and all of these other functions like a jitter and echo cancellation and so on. So there's quite a bit of digital signal processing. Um, in fact, uh, in all your smartphones uh, these days, uh, the the Qualcomm chip that's in there actually does a lot of the baseband processing, and it's an extremely important component uh, of, of of smartphones that delivers um, high quality calls. Okay, now putting it all together, if you look at a gateway or an AT ATA is, um, is an adapter, a, um, analog terminal adapter, which is uh, necessary. It, you normally use that in the home. Uh, where you can have these triple play services uh, when the carrier wants to convert you to VOIP technology but still utilize your standard home wiring. So they'll use a regular phone and convert that to IP just for a single channel and uh, do the same thing that a gateway that is designed to handle hundreds of calls is doing. Essentially the same functions have to be performed. Uh, there could be echo cancellation involved, uh, some of these things Matt talked earlier about call progress tones, tone detection, um, voice activity detection. Some of the codecs would use uh, compression uh, not only in terms of the codec use, but also in terms of the silent periods between uh, utterances uh, and comfort noise. That's a, another thing that uh, may be uh, applied just to make sure that people are very used to hearing some small level of background noise. So uh, that's another reason for having side tone, for example. So you want to be, you want to kind of get the feeling that you are talking over a telephone circuit. So these uh, the side tone and the comfort noise are used to kind of mimic that. Um, and of course, the most important thing that is involved in, in the gateway architectures is the processing of the voice itself. Uh, the packaging of the voice into packets. Uh, you can have a variety of packet sizes and um, packet uh, durations. Uh, so you can packetize at 10 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds. It's very common. Call processing is the signaling. In the reverse direction, this jitter buffer tends to smooth out the impairments associated with an IP network. So these are the. This is the general architecture that a gateway presents. And in essence, when you're making these measurements, you're trying to measure the performance of each of these uh, functions. Yeah, All right. Sorry. Uh, okay, that's okay. No problem. Okay, so GL, uh, I'm going to get into a little bit of what, how we make all these measurements. And we have a certain set of tools that we have developed over the past uh, 15, 20 years of our existence. Uh, initially, it was, of course, TDM, but then became wireless and, and IP and so on. We have a whole host of call emulation tools, which we call MAPS ISDN, MAPS SS7, MAP. MAPS is, the, is the, the acronym that we use as a precursor to all of these protocols. Uh, it stands for Message Automation Protocol Simulation. So if you actually looked at a picture, go to our website of the MAPS, uh, what's under the umbrella of MAPS, uh, you would find that practically every conceivable pro, uh, protocol is covered under MAPS. That every wireless protocol, every TDM protocol, every um, protocol in between the, the transition between TDM and uh, IP, or for example, even ATM, there's protocols that were used in between called asynchronous transfer mode that was also used in the wireless world. So we have we have a whole host of these protocols that we can analyze and emulate. These tools are used, they're, they're used to, to generate hundreds of calls to thousands of calls to tens of thousands of calls. So these are our tools that we've developed over the years. Pro same thing in, under protocol analysis. Every protocol that we can emulate, we can analyze. And we want to analyze that uh, for um, uh, for all the different codecs, for the different signaling techniques, and we have a uniform way of analyzing these protocols. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a theme behind each, uh, there's a theme that spreads across all the protocols. There's a look and feel, so they're all pretty much the same. Um, uh, then we have 
something that digs even further than the protocol, and that's the actual voice signal. The voice signal is the speech signal that's being uttered by human beings, or it could be video, or it could be facts. So these are the actual signal content. Uh, so we have a variety of software that allows us detailed analysis of voice signals, fax signals, DTMF tones, and and MF tones, and you know all sorts of um, the voice band signals. Uh, what do I mean by detailed analysis? We're talking about frequency components, uh, whether they're dual tone, single tone, the power levels and uh, durations and burst characteristics and so on. Uh, so it, that covers different um, sampling rates, different codecs, different um, uh, w whatever the particular protocol is, u is using. So that's another level of details. The protocol tells you, shows you the signaling, but the content that is being carried is in the actual voice, voice signal, fax signal, uh, tone signals. So that's, we do another level of, of analysis there and the ability to capture the call as it is triggered by the signaling sequence that is uh, part of that protocol. So we have all of this data. What do we do with it? Then, well, we're trying to uh, capture this data, the, the signaling, the, um, the, the voice band statistics um, into, um, and, and send all that information. You can either see it point by point, call by call, or you can collect it all and uh, relate it to uh, perhaps how the call is doing it at the other end, et cetera. But for that, we use what we call our net surveyor web light. And we have a version of it that's also more centralized that can handle hundreds of thousands of calls. The light version is, is appropriate for uh, more portable environments. So uh, there we're talking about tens to tens of thousands of calls to 50,000. Okay. So th this, these are, you know, as Vijay mentioned, just to let everyone know, these are sort of our building blocks um, for the the gateway performance testing that we're going to be presenting here, these are um, you may you may be existing customers and so forth that are familiar with some of these products that we currently have had over the years. Um, they're established products at GL, and they're the building blocks to to bringing this together to test from you know IP to TDM and so forth. So, just to mention that. Okay, so here I'm going to allow uh, our developer architect for the gateway delay measurement. Um, well, when when we looked at new software to write, we thought, hey, what, what are the kinds of things that people are interested in, um, in these networks, in these hybrid networks as people are transitioning from one to another? One of the very important things is the, those impairments, the delay, uh, the end-to-end -end delay, because that's a very critical number that affects voice quality. Uh, the impairments uh, in the network, like bit error rate or packet loss, out of sequence, uh, the codec, et cetera, are also components. So uh, these are all um, uh, factors that affect end-to-end -end voice quality or end-to-end -end fax quality, end-to-end -end video quality. It is essentially the same thing. So we, we decided to uh, uh, try to do this not only end-to-end, -end, but also make it make, uh, do allow box measurements. Uh, so here we're showing this. I'm going to turn this over to our architect for for the gate, gateway delay measurement, as Chayton. Chayton, do you want to take over and perhaps explain uh, how we're doing this gateway delay measurement? Yeah, thank you, Vijay. Um, yeah, uh, basically uh, what you see here is a gateway um, uh, with the which is connected to both uh, IP and TDM side. Uh, so basically what it is doing is that it is converting the IP traffic uh, to the TDM traffic and vice versa. So, but as it was mentioned earlier, but, uh, like there are uh, delays um, and uh, performance issues. Um, uh, so uh, we basically concentrated on uh, two things. Uh, one is um, uh, voice quality uh, uh, of the uh, audio uh, or the um, uh, data which comes out of the this gateway. Uh, I mean, basically, want to test that, uh, give us a score uh, of of how the uh, voice quality is when it is uh, 
uh, when it comes out of the gateway. And the second aspect, uh, what we thought was like um, uh, the delay which the gateway introduces uh, when it is processing this uh, data. So, um, uh, like uh, from the TDM to IP side, there is a packetization delay, uh, and from the IP to TDM side, there is a jitter buffer, which is going to hold the traffic um, until uh, it. Um, uh, according to settings, we have 40 millisecond data buffer, 100 millisecond data buffer, or any any value. So uh, basically, to smooth out the uh, uh, traffic on the TDM side. So uh, well, the way we do it is uh, uh, like uh, we uh, actually capture uh, the traffic uh, from uh, the uh, TDM side and the IP side. Uh, so the uh, when the tra um, traffic is moving from the TDM side to the IP side, uh, the TDM uh, capture is uh, actually uh, the TDM capture and IP captures uh, are created. Um, the TDM side is uh, uh, for delay measurement. I'm talking about the delay measurement. Uh, the TDM uh, capture is uh, taken as a reference. And the IP capture is uh, taken as the uh, degraded sort of thing. So uh, we try to compare. Uh, we try to do burst analysis. Okay, we try to find out uh, bursts, uh, um, matching bursts, and the delay in the between the bursts, as as it as it is uh, can be seen in this picture on the right um, right hand corner. So um, so there is a hundred millisecond delay here. So, uh, so this is what uh, this is how we try to uh, find out the delay, um, uh, which is introduced by the gateway. Uh, so, so the the second aspect which I mentioned. I'm I'm, I'm very yeah. sorry, Chetan. So one thing I'll just expand on with what you said there is so um, just in. in Simple terms, we're able to capture it, the, the TDM side with our ISDN in this particular diagram, ISDN protocol analyzer. And on the IP side of the gateway, we're capturing with what we call our packet scan product. Both are being fed in, you know, at a central point here at, at a PC that both of these are housed on. So we have the timing source, um, you know, local, and it's shared between the two. And that is how... Chaitin is able to show down here uh, the delay. You can see the same utterance. Um, you know, this is this is showing you on the on the uh, VoIP side, on the IP side. It must be sending because it's coming first, and then you can see 100 milliseconds later, it's showing up on the TDM side, and I can see that based on these two things. So that that's sort of basically how we're doing that. Um, and he, he's going to be able to get into a little bit more details on, on what exactly we're doing and so forth. But that's that's the basic um, right. stuff right there. In, in fact, uh, just to add to that, the, 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 the trick here is we've got the two protocol analyzers, the IP analyzer and the ISDN analyzer in the same processor running simultaneously, synchronized to one clock so we can make these types of measurements. The technique that we're using here, uh, that maybe we'll get into it in a few minutes, is that while the protocol analyzers are doing their thing, which is looking for calls and capturing calls independently on the IP side and, in, and on the TDM side, they're doing their basic function. Uh, but they are synchronized to this one clock. Uh, on top of that, so we have all of the statistics associated with the signaling and associated with the call. Uh, these are independent, as if they are independent protocols, but we know that they are related in this particular instance. Uh, one call is actually equal to the other call in, one, in a respect that it has essentially the same media, perhaps converted by codec. It, it could be delayed by some amount and um, those are, I mean, it's relatively the same. So what we have to do, if we're taking this delay measurement, we have to use a single clock and we have to look at the captures that are happening at the same time at both directions and match up these bursts. So we don't want to necessarily match up the call starting times or anything like that, because that's uh, that could be, uh, that could fool you. Um, uh, what we want to do is 
base it on the actual utterance. And then you can do this on an utterance by utterance basis. Utterances are, we know that an utterance on the IP side is going to be the same utterance on the TDM side and so on. So that's the technique that we're using uh, and allows us to also track variable delay as a call is progressing. There can be, especially since this IP world, there can be variable delay on the IP side, although the the TDM, the, the jitter buffers are t supposed to smooth it out. They may or may not do that. There may be variable, uh, the, the jitter buffer itself may be adaptive. That's one of the ways that uh, uh, they try to uh, smooth out this uh, these jitter buffers. So there's something called an adaptive jitter buffer, whereas you may not use an adaptive jitter buffer when you're sending fax, for example. So these are all, uh, we thought that the best way to make these delay measurements is to base it on the fundamental utterances made by, by made by the the voice signal itself. Okay, and, so, and we're knowing that throughout the a single call multiple right. times, right? That's what you were yes. saying about varying yes. delay within a single call. Yes, uh, okay. these so. captures are happening simultaneously on as many calls that are progressing. For example, we talked earlier that some of the the density of calls can be quite high. We are also interested in the performance of the gateway when there is high load volume. So these thing, these statistics that we're talking about, the metrics are affected by load. They're affect, uh, not just a single call. So we have to make these measurements across all of the calls that may be present at any given instant in time. So this is yeah, happening. Very important um, with the load. I mean, a load yes. on the gateway, you know, many calls through a gateway at any given single point in time can have effects on the performance of the gateway, um, as, as we know. Um, and we had mentioned earlier about some of our maps signaling emulators. Um, we're not showing them in this diagram. I think we have some of that in future diagrams in the presentation, but we can load up these gateways uh, from the endpoints here with our emulators, our protocol emulators, and make 100 calls through the gateway or 1,000 calls through a gateway and see what these numbers show um, and how that gateway is performing under load. It's very, it's in a very important um, aspect of testing a gateway, of course. So. Mm -hmm. it we'll zoom in on the specifics associated with actual delay. So this is the, this is, if you look at a box, rather than an internet network. The gateway is fundamentally, as far as converting TDM to IP, TDM has a stream of data, which has samples in time slots. It's very synchronous streaming type of uh, a signal. Whereas on the packet side, you have this very bursty nature of it. Uh, packets are, are consolidated uh, number of samples, like for example, 20 millisecond packets would constitute what? About um, uh, 800, uh, 160 bytes uh, of samples. On top of that, you add the headers and so on. Uh, that would constitute the minimum delay, packetization delay, because you have to wait the 160 samples before you spit the packet out. Uh, that's in the TDM to IP direction. The IP to TDM direction, there you have to consider all the vagaries associated with the IP network. And we know, we talked earlier about IP networks are prone to adaptive routing, which means that packets arrive out of sequence. Uh, they're prone to packet loss because uh, voice is normally transmitted using UDP protocol. And that means that anywhere in the network, if there's congestion or um, it takes too long to, 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 uh, for that packet to arrive at the destination, it is simply discarded. There's something called time to live and, and so on. There's all sorts of protocols in the network that can cause a packet to be discarded. Um, and of course, in that case, when it does uh, if it does not arrive, then the jitter buffer or the processing here has a role to play. It has to decide, I, what do I do here? Do I repeat an older packet? Do I 
uh, interpolate between packets. This is called the packet concealment algorithm. But in any case, it has to wait a certain amount of time. Depending on, on the dynamics of the network, this jitter buffer can be constantly changing. And its size, that's why it's normally adaptive. And so the delay from the IP to TDM is usually larger. Uh, and you want to be able to establish that. So our, our um, uh, delay measurement capability will be able to measure accurately both directions of, um, of a gateway traffic. Uh, they're generally asymmetric. And that same technique yeah. is being used for voice quality as well. We're using, go ahead. Yeah, um, uh, like um, as uh, uh, as I had mentioned, like uh, the, uh, there are uh, two captures uh, in uh, for for a, for a single for for one measurement talking about one measurement here uh, on one side uh, either from the IP to TDM or TDM to IP. Uh, so, for example, if the traffic is tra uh, transitioning from the TDM to IP side, so what we do is we capture uh, eight seconds of uh, PCM traffic on the TDM side. And uh, the same thing we do it on the IP side. So um, uh, these uh, the, the captures are done at the same time uh, because they are synchronized with the same clock. Uh, so um, um, there is no uh, uh, delay offset. There is no uh, recording offsets there. So. Um, uh, then what we do is uh, uh, we try to uh, match the bursts based upon the frequencies and the power levels and the duration of the uh, burst. So uh, when you find a matching burst uh, or a couple of a matching bursts, then we uh, what we do is we find out the uh, offset between the bursts. And uh, then we average out that uh, because we are doing for uh, many bursts. This, uh, so we average out and uh, we uh, give the delay for that particular measurement. And then this is repeated for uh, multiple measurements uh, in, and during the same call because we do, uh, right now we are doing like uh, like three or three, three measurements per minute. So eight seconds of uh, capture uh, uh, on the TDM side, uh, uh, three times a minute. So uh, we average out all the uh, measurements and uh, uh, we just say that it, this is the delay, this is the average delay, uh, which was found in the in the TDM to IP direction or in the other direction, IP to TDM direction. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. So here, uh, now, how did we verify that the, uh, that the delay calculations are accurate? Well, since we're actually capturing the calls to uh, from beginning to end, uh, and they're synchronized. You can always manually verify that the uh, that the verification with a you know uh, the uh, audio pro any audio program like here where I think we're, this is called Audacity, uh, Gold Wave. There's all sorts of cool edit. There's a lot of uh, audio programs that allow you to capture it simultaneously. You'd be able to line them up and make the the measurement eyeball the measurement. So that's uh, one way that we've done that. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, so we're going to show you a little. There, there's a video that we will be putting onto the web that it, that shows how this software actually works, and uh, and how these protocol analyzers, et, et, uh, et cetera, are all working in in uh, unison to create to to make all these metric measurements. But here's just a very quick measurement setup that we that we've used. We remember we said maps ISDN um, maps is our Emulation umbrella, uh, message automation protocol simulation, a mouthful. ISDN, we generate ISDN calls, we receive IS, uh, SIP calls at the other end, and in the meantime, we are also capturing the, the, the bottom section here is the analysis section. So we created an emulation system that generates hundreds of thousands of calls, uh, a analysis system down below that can analyze ISDN and SIP simultaneously under one clock, uh, one clock, and we can introduce all sorts of delays that are uh, resemble the real network delays, and we can also uh, use impairment generators to to introduce packet loss. So this is our ISDN call generator. They all have the same look and feel. 
the ISDN call generation, you're familiar with the uh, signaling techniques there. There's a, a setup, uh, call proceeding, alerting, these are the standard ISDN type of messaging. So we can generate uh, many, many calls in ISDN. Once the call is generated in ISDN, so here we're showing the protocol analyzer. Remember I said that there was a, a protocol analyzer associated with the protocol emulator. And we can here timestamp the actual signaling protocol. CDRs are available that, that uh, combine the signaling on a call-by-call -call basis, although the protocol analyzer is running sequentially. And associated with this ISDN protocol analyzer is the next screen, which we call the uh, the, which dives packet. into the uh, yeah, which dives packet into data. the packet data analyzer. We call it that, but it, what it really is doing is it's diving into the uh, actual call, the voice signal or voice. the fact signal or the DTMF digits or whatever have you, and it's uh, those the, those signals are being analyzed as well in this. A detailed call. Uh, real quickly on this, as you can see, one thing to note, what we showed you before on the ISDN analyzer looked very similar to this screen, and this is the packet scan. So this is the IP side of our protocol analyzer. It's set up in the exact same manner. Um, summary view where you're showing all the packets going by. You have a CDR view at the bottom. So we're doing all of our packet, uh, all of our protocol analyzers, IP, TDM, they all look very similar. Just the protocol is different, so the messages are different. So, it's just so this is at the protocol level, and the companion to this, again, is called the Packet Data Analyzer, PDA. That's the next slide. And here we dig into the content, whether it's fax, voice, digits, whatever. Uh, and here, the, the other advantage here is you also get to see spectral and oscilloscope and the in-band digits and, and everything having to do with the actual content. And yeah. we, this is this is a very good um, uh, troubleshooting technique here. I mean, for someone troubleshooting, you you can actually be looking at individual calls, and like VJ mentioned, if I'm zeroing in on this particular call, I can uh, zoom in on it even more, and in real time, look at the spectral display, look at the waveform, um, look at the jitter as it's as it's. Um, it may be variable throughout the call. You'd be seeing it transition on these or, graphs. Or listen to it, for example. And, and listen to it in real time. Sure. Yes. So. We, okay, so all of this data is being collected. It's a massive amount of data. If you're interested in one particular call, of course, it's, it's fine. You can zoom in on that and try to analyze it, and that's very useful, actually, for diagnostic purposes when you have a, a needle in a haystack type of problem. You want to try to trigger on a particular type of call or a call number or... Uh, maybe trigger on a call that has poor voice quality. But in in general, there's a massive amount of data. We're talking about hundreds of simultaneous calls, recordings, and so on, and all these statistics that are being recorded. Well, we need a place to store them uh, if you're going to collect over a long period of time. And this is what we, the tool that we use for that is called Net Surveyor Web. In this case, it's the light system, and then there's a heavy system that is identical to this, except that in terms of volume, it can handle a lot more. So here, the, the three things that we've been talking about, delay measurement, protocol analyzer, or the, the signaling that's going on associated with a particular protocol, and the content analysis of voice, echo, tone, all of that stuff, they all, all those measurements are, are accumulated, are sent to this uh, Oracle-based uh, database, which can then be accessed by anyone from anywhere and analyzed. And there is the uniform way of looking at the data, making these metrics, measurement metrics. You can do it instantaneously. You can do it, uh, look at data that was happened a week ago or months ago. The next slide will kind of show you that. This net surveyor web like uh, puts all of this together uh, into a very nice. Uh, oh, okay. So we're gonna discuss the, the. Okay, we already discussed this, but we can go to the next slide. This basically is telling how the delay is entering the net surveyor web. The next slide will act. Uh -huh, there it is. This is the slide that's putting it all together. All of the statistics that are being captured on TDM 
uh, they're being captured on IP side that the uh, even the audio stream itself um, all of this is coming together and here you can match up calls you can match up an ISDN call with an IP call you can listen to the IP call you can listen to the ISDN call you can look at the in-band digits you can look at the noise you can look at echo you can uh, there's practically every uh, all of the analysis is available here in a unified view and you can actually scroll and trigger and these are all SQL based scripts so you can uh, create your own intelligent script to get key performance metrics and that we talked about earlier so this is where everything comes together and you can make an assessment and do diagnostics intelligently so one of the things that we have been concentrating on was delay right so here is where the delay can be easily analyzed there's lots of other places you can analyze it but it all comes together here where you're doing the averaging of of delay remember we talked about these individual bursts that are matched up and there can be because the jitter buffer is can be variable the network delay can be variable it's possible that that the delay can actually vary during the call so what we do is we make these measurements on a burst by burst basis average them and for any particular call you can see here there is an average delay a max delay uh, in one direction similarly in the opposite direction uh, um, and these are the one-way delays of this gateway um, you can actually apply the same principle end-to-end -end as well so uh, this, uh, this 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 kind of shows you that uh, where uh, here we're talking about voice quality but end-to-end -end, that's what we're interested in um, voice quality is done in exactly the same manner as the delay measurements and uh, we use of course it, in, you may be familiar with how voice quality measurements are made there is something called a reference file you can see here over on the right hand side down below reference PCM file so whatever we're capturing we we label that as reference because it's going through the gateway and what we capture on the other side of the gateway we term to be degraded because we assume that the gateway is not perfect and it, it won't be. Uh, There's very unlikely that it will be a perfect thing. Um, and so we make, we, we, you know, we call it degraded. And yep. there are algorithms. Polka, you may have heard about that. That's the most recent standard that is in vogue. Prior to that, there was something called PESC and prior to that, other standards. Um, those take into account the codec. Uh, they even take into account the delay. Uh, they take into account a lot of this, uh, uh, these impairments and give you a MOS score, MOS, mean opinion score. It's a much better way of analyzing than uh, the old way where you had human beings uh, make uh, voice quality subjective measurements. Yeah, okay, so one, one thing to note here, just to, just to go over it real quick. So uh, the voice being sent, for, for instance, from this analog side, gets captured at this point on the TDM. This becomes the reference file to compare versus doo -doo -doo -doo, goes across the gateway, this guy, the degraded file. So this reference file is compared to this degraded file and you get the quality through the device under test, the gateway. And one thing to note uh, on the IP side, now we're, we're actually um, looking at the content of the IP packets with this. Um, and giving you a score. So we're not just basing this quality score on, you know, packets lost or, you know, out of order packets, things like that. This is actually the content, the voice of um, being sent from end to end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, we do do, it would, in packet scan, if you, uh, you can look at it on the web, et cetera, but we do even give you the uh, uh, the voice quality metric based on, packet flow that's called e model or r factor you may be aware of that uh, but here we're concentrating more on the actual content and how we do this reference uh, and degraded comparison and we run it through either pesk or polka and give it a uh, a industry standard uh industry uh, patented i think um right. score uh, Score on the five score, basically. Right. This is just showing uh, details of what we just described. So, um, right. 
being sent from here, reference degraded on the far right, and the score. And the same thing is being done in the opposite direction. This is showing you one one direction. One direction. Correct. Yep. And again, we since there are uh, since a call can be very long, it can be minutes, hours. Uh, so and the voice quality can actually be variable during the call. And we hope not, but it can be. And you want to understand that aspect of it. So there's averaging going on there as well. Uh, there's a max and a min and a average uh, for both directions. So that's what this this uh, slide is showing. And we're putting it all together. Finally, uh, what we're showing here is you can write your own SQL scripts. And since you have the protocol flow, you have the, the, the voice band measurements, you have the delay measurements, um, the voice quality measurements, you can create your own KPIs. And we've done this for many of our customers, either customized it or, or uh, we give a, a, um, a um, boatload of uh, basic KPIs. Uh, this delay measurement is one of them. Um, but uh, they are all handled through um, uh, SQL scripts and a report that looks something like this, but certainly can be much more complicated, uh, can be produced automatically at 12 midnight, for example. And it will give you the result of the day's activity, uh, how many bad calls there were, how many new, uh, good calls there were, how many calls were delayed by in excess of uh, 200 milliseconds, and so on. Okay, so Matt wants to thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. Sorry, yes. Um, I, I just wanted to follow up on that last slide that I scrolled okay. through quickly. Uh, it's an important thing. Uh, you know, as maybe a network administrator, somebody responsible for a network, um, we've got customers that like to do what VJ just mentioned, and that is just get an email at 12 midnight that says, hey, here's what happened throughout the last one day, and here's your performance. Here's your here Here's what has happened. Now, what are the metrics that they're interested in? They may be different from you to, to the next one guy to the next guy, but um, we can customize all of that and we can spit out a report every night that you can look at. We can spit out a report every night, a daily report. We can spit out a monthly report. We can spit out a weekly report. Whatever you want to do, it's very customizable once that data is into the net surveyor web. So um, with that, uh, it looks like we're, we've just expired our one hour, which we like to try to, to keep it to, and we've done that today. Uh, so we want to thank you and uh, just uh, wish everyone uh, happy holiday season's greetings. Um, just and make an announcement here that our next webinar, we're going to do it every month. As, you, as If you're aware of that uh, from previous ones, we do it every month. We'll have a new topic. It will be on our website. Um, at this point, what we can do is, um, uh, Sanjeev, if you can jump in um, and maybe ask a question or two, uh, I can expand on. And maybe we thought we've we uh, uh, just explain how this uh, delay measurement uh, would be useful uh, in case of uh, troubleshooting any uh, network, because the delays can be associated with the network or any other. Uh, areas also so how our kpis will be useful for troubleshooting okay so I mean, i'll take a crack at that and matt and chayton you can also chime in uh so our delay delay measurement uh, technique that we showed here can surround a box and it can surround the end-to-end -end, or it can surround a portion of the end-to-end -end, uh, equipment or um, 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 you know, uh, that, uh, a portion of the path. So uh, it it depends on how you how you uh, configure the system and where your access points are. If the access points were at the end to end point, then you're getting end to end information, and it's all consolidated. Uh, the, the data will be consolidated. You're getting end to end delay, for example, which is a, probably an extremely useful metric. Um, you're getting end-to-end -end MOS scores, which is extremely useful. However, if you surround just the gateway, you're getting the gateway performance. If you surround, uh, you know, some other elements in the network, then you're getting the performance of that particular. So it's possible to isolate in that sense. 
Yep, correct. I, I think that that answers that. I, I, would, I was going to say something very similar to that. It's where, where are you, where are you uh, monitoring? Where are you analyzing? Um, you can isolate the gateway. You can be on the immediate, uh, in this diagram, the left and the right side of the gateway. Or, you know, obviously we're not showing many other network elements here uh, from end to end. So you can, you can put our uh, analysis, our capture points at different, different locations. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining. We, we appreciate everyone joining. Please let us know if you have any questions. Uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the, uh, at the beginning, we're going to post the webinar. So if you'd like to review it, um, get back to us. Um, as uh, Sanjeev just mentioned, info at gl.com is uh, an easy way to get a hold of us. Just mention you're on the webinar and you got a, you got a question for us. And it'll get to us eventually. So um, appreciate it. Um, as we mentioned, uh, season's greetings and happy holidays to everyone. Now that we're getting very close to this, we're already in that for some for some religions. So um, good luck. Happy New Year to everyone. And we will see you uh, next year in January. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.